Okay, in this video, we're going to learn about copying and pasting a formula. Now, like I said, if you're dealing with just regular data, like just the label or a number or, or anything like that, then copying and paste works exactly the same as we already learned about in Word. But when you're dealing with formulas, it works a little bit different. Now, let me show you how this works. So tickets sold is going to change every single month. Ticket price will be the same every single month. Revenue is always going to change. The number is going to change, but the formula will always stay the same. Okay. The formula will always be ticket sold times ticket price will get me my revenue. Same with profit. Profits, the formula will always be revenue minus expenses. So I can copy and paste the revenue and profit columns as long as I'm copying and pasted the formulas and not the numbers. So let's talk a little bit about how copying and pasting formulas works. I'm going to come here and I'm going to say 5, 5, 2, 2. Now, over in this column here, I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to click the 5, and I'm going to say plus, and I'm going to click the other 5, and I'm going to press return. So here's my formula. 5 plus 5 equals 10. Now, I want to copy this formula down here. So I'm going to select it and I'm going to paste it. But here's where you'll notice something different from our normal copying and pasting. If I was in Word, it would have just pasted a 10 down there, but it didn't. It pasted the formula, which is 2 plus 2, but it didn't paste the formula exactly. It actually pasted the formula in a way that is more likely the way we wanted it pasted. It's kind of, it's like a smart way of copy and pasting. You see, if the original formula, what I copied was D13 plus E13. Well, if it had pasted D13 plus E13 down here, then it would have still been 5 plus 5, because D13 is 5, and E13 is 5. So it didn't. It pasted D14 plus D14. So it's not actually a literal copy. It's more of a copy of my intentions in the formula. And the way that it's doing that is it's based upon location. So rather than copying and saying this formula is D13 plus E13, it's saying this formula is the cell 2 to the left of me plus the cell 1 to the left of me. And so when you paste it down there, you get the cell 2 to the left of me plus the cell 1 to the left of me. Okay? Now, that's usually what we want. We usually want it to copy and paste the same locational intention. And coming back to our example here, you'll see that's exactly what we want here. If I come here and I, I'm just going to do that click and drag. I'm going to click my little, my little uh, square in the lower right, drag it down. And you'll see that these both say zero because I don't have any number in tickets sold. But if you look at my formulas, B2 times C2, next one down is B3 times C3. Next one down is B4 times C4. So it did exactly what I wanted. It's going to do January's numbers, February's numbers, March's numbers. We'll do the same thing with profit. I'll drag those down. Now, the great thing is, is that this is all ready to go. This is one of the things that makes Excel so fantastic for businesses, is that you can take the time in the first place to create the template, create the formulas, have things where you need them to go, and then when you're actually filling it out, you don't need to put in much information. Every month, the person doing this only needs to type in how many tickets we sold and how what our expenses were. And it will automatically calculate the revenue and the profit because I've already got those formulas there. So I can say, okay, in February, we sold only 7,000 tickets and I immediately have a revenue and a profit because I haven't put in expenses in. They're exactly the same right now. We'll say that we only spent 15,000 that month. And then in March, we sold 11,500 tickets, but we spent 30,000 in expenses. So now I can see the profit for each of those months, the revenue for those, each of those months, because it copied and pasted the formulas. Now, there are times 
when we don't want it to do the locational copying and pasting. There are times when we want it to stay exactly the same. And I'm going to give you an example of one of those times. I'm going to kind of recreate this, this uh, example down here, but in a little different format. I'm going to say tickets sold, and then right by that I'm going to say revenue, then right by that I'm going to say expenses, and then profit. And over here I'm going to say January, February, and March. Now, the one I left out was ticket price. I left it out because ticket price is exactly the same every single month. So over here, I'm just going to write ticket price, $850. So tickets sold in January were $9,000. Revenue equals $9,000, well, the ticket sold for January, times my ticket price. Expenses were 20000 and the profit equals my revenue minus my expenses. So far, everything's looking exactly the same as the last one as far as my numbers go. Now, I'm going to copy and paste some things. So I'm going to copy and paste revenue down there, copy and paste profit down there. Now let's put in the next number, 7000 and 15000 so what happened? I now, revenue ended up at zero and profit at negative 1,500. To see what happened, all I need to do is go to this formula that I copied and pasted and select it in the, uh, in the formula bar, and I can see what cells are being used. This cell is being used just like it should, but now the cell below the ticket price is being used, which is an empty cell. The reason it did that is because I moved down one line. So it moved down one line. It moved down one line here, and it moved down one line here. But I didn't want it to move down one line here. I wanted to stay exactly the same here. Okay. So the solution to that is something that is called an absolute value. So what the, what the default is is called a relative value, where it changes based upon location. An absolute value says, I want you to always refer to this cell. I don't want you to change it ever. And the way you do an absolute value is actually by putting a dollar sign before the formula. That sounds kind of silly, but that's how it works. You just click equal, and I'm going to say 7,000 times, and I'm going to select my ticket price. But now, oh, whoops, let's uh, doing that in the wrong cell there. Let's go back and change this formula. So here's my formula. So I'm going to go to the M8. M8 is where my ticket price is. I'm going to put the cursor before the M, and I'm going to write a dollar sign. And what I did is I just locked it to column N. No matter where I paste it, it will always be column M. Now I'm going to go before the 8, and I'm going to do another dollar sign. Now I just locked it to row 8. I could just do one or the other, or I can do both, but it locks it to the column and or the row. So now it will not move from that column or row. Now if I click and drag down to copy and paste those. Whoops. You'll see that my formulas work the way that I wanted them to because it is shifting down the first part of the formula, the ticket sold column, but the ticket price is locked in place with an absolute value. Now, I know that can be a bit of an abstract concept. If you're still confused on it, you know, rewatch the video. But if you're having issues, talk to your instructor, talk to the tutors, and they can definitely help you understand that. It is an important aspect of, uh, of Excel to understand, but uh, to get down that absolute and that relative locations when copying and pasting formulas.